a look at GCOC uh, 10. This particular objective focuses on proving things about triangles. And um, this is an area that we've done proof in for many years. And again, I'm kind of interested in demonstrating things a little bit differently than maybe the standard because of the transformational approach that we're taking. But I will say this, that one of the things they want us to prove is that the three angles in a triangle add up to 180. The classic thing that's always been done is for a teacher to rip off the corners of the angles of the triangle. And if I can, maybe hold it up here so I've got them. You'll find that if you put those three angles all at the same vertex, they will form a straight angle of 180 degrees. And so informally we learn that the three angles together make 180 degrees. Actually, the classic proof as well as the proof I'll demonstrate uh, both kind of do the same thing as that. They kind of do alternate interior rotating to fit it into that spot. There are other things uh, to establish or prove. Uh, we'll prove things like um, that uh, the base angles of an isosceles are equal. We'll establish the exterior angle theorem here. Um, and again, I, I'd like to approach it both in a in a transformational as well as to show you the classic proofs that typically show up here. Um, let me just give you a little bit of a window as to the idea of establishing uh, the sum interior sum as 180. The classic proof idea is to show that 1, 2, and 3 add up to 180 and they do it by creating a parallel line to this one and the gist of the proof is to show that angle 1 has to be alternate interior here, angle 3 has to be alternate interior here and because they all sit upon a straight angle 1, 2, and 3 add up to 180. Uh, the proof that I'll uh, demonstrate uh, here in a minute under the Elmo will do a similar kind of thing. I'll start with a triangle ABC angles 1, 2, 3 and by performing a translation along that vector, it'll place a triangle here as well. Now again, without all of the formality, which we'll do in a minute, basically, I know that this forms a straight angle because it's a vector that's an extension of that side. So there's my 180 again. And then I'm able to establish that this angle must equal this one because they are uh, angles that are uh, image and pre-image of a translation, isometric nature. I'll be able to establish that these two have to be equal, uh, parallel, because the pre-image and the image are always parallel in a translation. And that will help me say that alternate interior angles put a 3 there. There's a similar kind of an argument, 1, 2, and 3 adding up to 180. And this time it's done by a translation. Very similar kind of thoughts and, and uh, process there. I'm going to break this up into a couple of videos, so I'm going to hold it right there. And let's take a look at this proof. Let me just go through what I would call the classic proof that uh, the three angles of the triangle add up to 180. So given just any old generic triangle, I want to prove that 1, 2, and 3, or A, B, and C all add up to 180. The trick to uh, doing this classic proof is this auxiliary line or an extra line that you create so that it's parallel to uh, AC, one of the sides. Notice I also labeled the new angles, angle 4 and angle 5. And ultimately this uh, is just the idea that I noticed that the measurement of angle 4 and the measurement of angle 2 and the measurement of angle 5 all add up to 180 because they are a linear pair or supplements on a line. So I see the line 4, 2, and 5 all form that straight angle. Okay, And then um, what I now notice is I'm kind of close to what I want. I want 1, 2, and 3 equals 180. I notice that it's 4, 2, and 5. This is actually all ready to go. So I just need to talk about 4 and 1. Well, I notice that 1 is equal to 4. I know that. And actually, I know that 3 
is equal to 5. For the same reason, both of these uh, have to be equal because they are alternate interior angles that are congruent with parallel lines. There's the parallel lines. And so I can substitute a 1 for a 4 and a 3 for a 5. So I'm going to do them at the same time. I'm going to put in a 1 where I saw 4. I'm going to put in a 3 where I saw 5. And by making two substitutions. And there it is. I've proven that 1, 2, and 3 equal 180. Now, I'm, uh, again, a little more interested in... Um, looking at new ways to do some of these things. And so I would like to maybe approach it using a transformational approach. So I'll, it, you'll see that the logic behind it will be quite similar, but you'll notice that it will come based off of a transformation and not this auxiliary line idea. So the way I want us to think about it is uh, I'm going to do it. Let's see if I can get my... I'm going to do a translation of, uh, I think I'm going to slide it uh, by vector AB. So what would happen is that uh, along this ray, we would continue along. C would move to a location like this, C prime, B prime here, A prime equals this. So let's mention that. So. I translate my triangle ABC by vector AB, it forms a straight angle uh, A, B, B prime. So because I, I followed that same vector, it will continue and, and form a straight angle A, B, a, B prime. Next, because I've performed a translation, I can also say that um, I can say because translations are isometric, I can state that the measure of angle 1 is got to be the same as the measure of B prime, B, and C prime. Right? These have to be the same. These physically have to be the same because the translation makes it isometric. Now you can see I'm almost there. I have, I've identified that this is a straight angle. In other words, it has 180 degrees. I have angle 1 and 2. I just have to get uh, angle 3 in there. And I'm going to use the fact that the translation formed parallel lines uh, B B prime C parallel to AC. Okay. We know that all translations, uh, when they are completed, that the original side is parallel to the image. And this is going to allow me to use my nice little fact of that, therefore, The measure of angle 3 is the same as the measure of C, B, C prime. C, B, C prime. Uh, because alternate interior angles are congruent with parallel lines. And now you can see I have placed angle 1, 2, and 3 all there. So, by substitution, the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle, uh, sorry, and angle 3 equals 180 degrees. 
So maybe I was running out of space and going a little faster. I probably could clean this up a little bit, but the basic idea is there for you. I'm going to perform a translation, and in doing so, it made a straight angle right here. Now, not only did that translation form that straight angle, it did two more things I needed. It copied the angle here, angle 1, to this new image location, because an image and the original have to be equal. It also created um, a set of parallel lines, because in a translation, uh, the image and the pre-image segments are all parallel. And that allowed me to say alternate interior angles had to be equal here because of the parallel lines. And then 1, 2, and 3 add up to 180. So a uh, nice little uh, real-time proof using translations. And um, here now you can just see how basic this becomes. If they give you two angles, you just subtract them from 180 to find the missing angle and so on. Uh, here you would subtract 50 from 180 and divide it by 2 because there are two angles like that. So I'm going to actually uh, break it here because there's a lot of different things, uh, lots of little pieces here. And uh, I'm going to just do this as one video and then I'll go from here.